Welcome to part four of my four-part series on the tractor preferences. In part four, I'm gonna talk about how to customize your global section, which includes your effects, your recording, and the loop recorder, and also how to manage your files inside of Tractor. The full screen resolution determines the zoom factor of Tractor's full screen view. If you set it to desktop, Tractor uses the native resolution of your computer at a one-to-one -one ratio. When using another view, Tractor appears zoomed in. If you have switched to full screen on startup selected, Tractor will fill your entire screen when you launch the application. Tool tips are a great way to learn Tractor if you're just getting started with the program. If you have Show Tool Tips enabled, short descriptions will pop up when you hover your mouse over different sections of the program. Deck Focus will let you decide which deck is the focus deck, either on the hardware or the software. If software is chosen, you can click on a deck's header to make it the focus deck. If Show Value when over control is checked, any knob that you hover over will show its value. The Reset Hidden Dialogues button will reset all dialogues that have been hidden by clicking on the Don't Show This Again checkbox. The Effects section is where you can customize Tractor's effects panels and choose which effects will be available to you. Tractor has two different effects modes, Insert and Send Effects. Insert Effects is the most popular used mode since there are no extra cables needed. When the effect is in insert mode, it's placed in the signal chain right before the channel filter and you can control the dry wet amount with the dry wet knob. Send effects mode requires you to use an extra input and output of your sound card. It receives input from an external source and feeds it through your effects chain and out of another output of your sound card. In the effects section, you can also choose if you want to use two or four effects units providing you with even more option for creative effects chains and effects routing combinations. If the restore parameters when switching effects box is checked, each time you switch effects, it'll change all of the parameters to whatever default value you set. In the effects panel mode box, you can set each of your effects panels to be either a group effect or a single effect. Single mode gives you four knobs and four buttons to control only one effect. Group mode will give you three effects in each panel with one button and one knob to control each effect. In the effects pre-selection window, you can choose which effects you want to have available to you and remove effects that you don't use very often. To add an effect to your arsenal, click on an effect from the available effects window and click add. To remove an effect from your arsenal, click on an effect in the pre-selected effects window and click remove. If you'd like to reorder your effects, you can click on the effect you want to move and then click the up or down buttons to move it up or down in the list. The mix recorder section is where you can choose how you're going to record your sets in Tractor and where they'll be stored. If you're using an external DJ mixer, you'll want to choose an external source and then select your input. If you're using the Audio 10, a good input to choose is the Input Effects Send EXT, so you can plug in your DJ mixer to the main inputs of the Audio 10. If you're using Tractor's internal mixer, you'll choose the internal option. This is good for users of the Tractor Control S4 or Tractor Control S2, or for people who only DJ using their mouse and keyboard. In the file window, you can choose the folder that your recorded sets are saved to. I like to set my folder to the desktop. You can also choose a prefix for your recording so it adds a prefix to your file name. The split file size option is good if you want to split your recording into CD length sizes. A typical CD can hold 700 megabytes of audio. If 700 megabytes is selected, Tractor will split the file at 700 megabytes. I like to select the maximum size of 2048 so the recordings aren't split, so I can go back and split them myself manually afterwards. The loop recorder section is where you can customize the behavior of the loop recorder. Record latency will adjust the latency or delay of the loop recorder when you're using it in external mode. 
Overdubbing will adjust the percentage of time that it takes for recorded audio to fade out when you're overdubbing. The broadcasting section is where you can configure your settings for doing internet broadcasts in Traktor. This will be covered in more detail in future tutorials, but in this section you can set up internet broadcasts via Traktor with programs like Icecast or Nicecast, and you can also use the broadcasting section to tweet your track IDs live on Twitter via Twitter DJ. The file management section is where you can point to where your music and collection folders are and choose how Traktor handles and manages newly imported files. The music folders section is where you can point to different music folders on your hard drive. Be careful when choosing this option because if you choose import music folders at startup, it'll import all the music in the folders that you point to. You might not want all of your music in Traktor. I personally just point only to my new music folder. If determine track time automatically before analysis is selected, Traktor will automatically determine the track time before analyzing it. If analyze new imported tracks is selected, anytime you import a track either by automatic import, dragging it into a deck, or adding it to the track collection or Traktor playlist, Traktor will automatically import the track for you. If analyze new tracks when loading into deck is selected, Traktor will automatically analyze new tracks when you load them into a track deck. Be careful when analyzing tracks while you're playing live because analyzation can raise a CPU load. File structure mode will determine how your tracks are organized when you export a playlist. If you choose none, Traktor will simply copy your tracks to the folder you chose and won't organize them in the subfolders. If you choose flat, files will be named in an 01 artist-title format during the exporting process. If you choose artist, Traktor will separate the tracks you're exporting into subfolders based on the artist name. The same goes for if you choose label. You'll have subfolders of tracks separated by label. In the BPM detection window, you can choose your analyzation range. This means when Traktor analyzes new tracks, the BPM detection won't detect any BPM outside of the range you choose, so I'd recommend setting a BPM range that's 10 BPM slower and 10 BPM faster than what you would typically DJ at. Set Beat Grid when detecting BPM will automatically set a beat marker for you where it thinks the first beat of the song is. It will then place a series of evenly spaced white lines across your song where it thinks each beat is. Store Beat Marker as Hot Cue will automatically place the beat marker it set for you as a saved cue point in the cue panel. I like to have this turned off so it doesn't take up the extra cue point slot, but some might like to turn it on just so you can click on cue point 1 to go to the beginning. The Directories tab is where you can point Traktor to where your Traktor collection is stored and where your iTunes music library is stored. If iTunes is working correctly in Traktor and you're not having any problems loading samples or having collection problems, don't touch this section. If your iTunes library is missing in Traktor, point the iTunes Music Library to your iTunes Music Library.xml file located in Music iTunes. To change any of the directory locations, just click on the exclamation point button and then locate the file or folder. The controller manager is where you can load, edit, save, and manage your controller and keyboard mappings. Since the controller manager is such a deep topic, we'll be covering this in other tutorials, and we also cover this in our online digital DJing with Traktor online class with myself and DJ Shifty. In the device setup window, the device menu is used to select which device you want to view and edit. If you want to import a mapping, you can click on the Add button. If you want to change the name or delete the mapping, you can also do so by clicking on the Edit button. Additionally, you can choose the MIDI Import and Outport. By default, the Import and the Outport will be set to All Ports. You'll want to change this manually to whatever corresponds to the controller you're mapping. 
The assignment table lists all the commands for whatever device you have selected in the device menu. The device mapping and mapping details section are where you can further edit each MIDI command. I hope you guys enjoyed the videos. By this time you should have your own customized tractor set up and you should know a lot of how tractor works under the hood. For more videos, check out dubspot.com. Peace. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, Dubspot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore Dubspot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.